<laughs> Good to see you here as well. Actually, so far we can say hello to Christiane, Florian. Irene is here as well, even, but yes, I'm going to get Hi. back to this hello. later. Like, get <laughs> well soon. <laughs> Oliver, Rico, Zep Downey, Black Will, and Tom. All right. Okay, I'm going to start this off right now. So, hello, my name is Anne, and I want to welcome you to another edition of uh, our format GamesNet Berlin Europe introduces where we shine a digital spotlight on interesting games companies from Berlin. Today, we introduce you to Happy Broccoli Games and their game, Kraken Academy, a Groundhog Day adventure inspired by 90s comedy anime. Our host, Andre Bernhardt, will talk to studio director Annika Marr and programmer and game designer Johnny Levenkind. And of course, you are also invited to ask questions through the Q&A tool and they will be answered at the end. Before we start, I have a few short announcements and uh, want to thank our partners. Games in Berlin Europe is an initiative of MediaNet Berlin Brandenburg, whose network reaches beyond the games industry, connecting Berlin's and Brandenburg's media, creative and digital industry to create meaningful connections and facilitate interdisciplinary synergies. The project is financed by the European Union through its European Regional Development Fund and the State of Berlin, namely the Senate Department of Economics, Energy and Public Enterprises through its program for internationalization. We have a lot planned for 2022. For example, we will go, we will go to Nordic Games Conference in May and we can take Berlin-based games companies with us. So if you're interested in joining our delegation trip, please get in touch. Uh, I will drop my email address in the chat if you're interested. Please make sure to follow our social media channels and find event information, uh, podcast episodes, and the newsletter on our website at gamesnetberlin.eu. And now with Without further delay, please welcome our wonderful guest, Annika, Joni, and our host, Andre. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Applause, everyone. It's good <laughs> to have you all here. Even if we are, even that we are slightly smaller edition of this day of today's talk than it was actually planned because we have actually two yeah COVID uh, victims. Uh, one of them is Florian. Get well soon. I guess he's not even watching, so might be hopefully not too serious <laughs> <laughs> and also uh irene who can't be with us today but she's still around in the chat she's alive yeah <laughs> she's alive hopefully doing well get well soon um but nevertheless i'm very happy that uh, the three of us are totally healthy and i would love to say uh hello and a big uh, warm welcome to annika and johnny as well oh. so as we can't as we can't hear the audience applauding like crazy um it's just like i continue with so shortly introducing myself so um you might know me already from former editions of this great format gamesnet berlin introduces that are also hosted just recently with topper games my name is andre bernhard i run indie advisor and company and um Today, I'm in the happy situation to talk not about myself, but to talk with Annika and Johnny about Broccoli Games and Kraken Academy. So first of all, Annika, Johnny, introduce yourself for a second. Who's with us and what's your role within um, Happy Broccoli Games? Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Super excited to be here. And uh, I'm Annika and I do the art and the writing on the game, as well as keeping the vision. And with me here... Johnny. Yeah, I'm Johnny. I do all the programming and also most of the panicking. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be all of the panicking. Most of it, not all of it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm like the, the calm, the, calm the calmness, and then Johnny is the, the excitement of, of the company. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but mainly the programming. That's the, the job title. So. <laughs> and how, how is the panicking level right now? Because you just, um, you just released the co two console versions of your game, actually. <laughs> Well, now it's now it's okay. Yesterday mm -hmm. it was through the roof, but <laughs> I feel like with releasing, it's both the best and the worst thing you can do in life. I think <laughs> and this is how it feels for me right now. It's like a roller coaster. You're like, yay! Oh my god! Oh god! Oh no! And if just the tiniest thing goes wrong, then, oh no, it's fine again. And I think right now we're we're 
off the roller coaster. Yeah. We're through the ride. We're fine now, even though we haven't released in Japan yet, but I don't think anything super out of the ordinary is going to happen there. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I don't think it's going to go wrong. Touch in some Japan. Wood, touch some uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think we're fine now. Yeah. Number, yeah. Numbers are looking okay. So it's like, whew, okay, <laughs> everything's fine. So far, you just released um, PC then. That was the first uh, first platform where you also developed the game. And then yesterday, you added Switch as well, uh, as well as Xbox, right? Yes, that's right. So every Game Pass owner, because we talked before a little bit already, make sure to download the game right now as it's available on Game Pass. But sure, also buy it on Switch. Best thing, you buy it on every platform twice exactly. and give it to all your friends and family because after this talk, you will be very much excited about Kraken Academy. Mm -hmm. um, to get to know you a bit better, Annika and Johnny, I stalked your homepage and um, it's, it's very nicely done and you have some little uh, short bio biographies about yourself on the homepage where you tell us some little th secrets about yourself, what you like and what you don't like. <laughs> and Oh, we're not that secret, but yeah. <laughs> maybe not that secret. But tell us what's behind Annika that you don't like disco balls. <laughs> okay, so I don't know how this is not a more common thing because this enormous ball, okay, hanging from the ceiling, it's really damn dangerous. And then what do people do? They're just dancing underneath, just waiting to die. And I, and I looked up, you know. A disco ball related incidents and there was this one <laughs> this one party where for some reason it was full of doctors and nurses uh, like dancing i don't know why and the disco ball did come down and so no one died no one died but they got injured very badly and also i think they didn't die because it was all doctors and nurses so they knew what to do you know but it does happen and now anytime i see a huge disco ball i'm just like oh my god that is dangerous i'm not getting close to it <laughs> And uh, actually, you're totally right. Short side fact. I'm born and raised in Offenbach, which was a musical city once because they played the Tommy musical over there mm -hmm. until a bit disco ball came down and <laughs> someone died in the audience and then they stopped the show. Now Offenbach is not a musical city there anymore. So the fear, <laughs> the fear is real. <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> But Johnny... <laughs> Yeah. You have issues. You don't like dancing beyond watermelons, or what's the what's your issue with watermelons? I just I just really don't like them. I just think <laughs> I just think for something for something that is so much water, it tastes nothing like water. It it promises something very like very refreshing, and to me, it's not refreshing at all. It's it's like a yeah, you know that's betrayal. The, that's from the one. You know the one symbol of happiness and summer and the yeah. beach and exactly they look so cool they have the amazing like the amazing yeah. hats on the outside and then for me I bite in and it's like just disappointment oh, or... it, it's like I, it's like the it's to me it's like the worst texture and flavor <laughs> oh it's so fleshy <laughs> why do you want your your like fruit to be fleshy I don't know it's, <laughs> it weirds me out <laughs> so. Make sure if you're ever invited to a release party of Happy Broccoli, then bring disco ball. Don't bring disco balls and watermelons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, before you before you um, uh, founded Happy Broccoli Games, um, what did you do before? What make you what made you founding the studio actually? Um, uh, yeah, but first of all, a little bit about your background would be nice. Right. So uh, before this, I was a fantasy illustrator and I did a lot of stuff for Ulysses, a lot of pen and paper stuff that, like the dark eye. Um, and that was very fun. Um, but then, yeah, at some point I felt the need to, to create something on my own because I mean, it was always very fun to work on other people's projects to fulfill their vision. And that was great. But um, I think, yeah, I just kind of, grew a bit bored of it or rather than I just, I always want more, right? It's always more, always new. Um, and so I really wanted to learn um, how to how to program and yeah, just do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And I had um, a friend who was in a small indie team and that was for the first time where I saw firsthand, oh, it's possible to make a really cool game with a small team. You know, you don't need to be a triple A and have hundreds of people yeah. working on it. Um, and that, that was very inspiring. And that's that's when I just started because it doesn't help just waiting for the perfect moment. It's never going to come. It's like perfect time is now. Just just do it now. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, but just one uh, question to add on here. Um, you are working on the pen and paper edition then of The Dark Eye and not at the video game that was developed here in Berlin once a while. I can't remember yeah. the name of the studio. Okay, but you, ca okay, you came from the, the, the board Delic game. The made it, I think, yeah. Yeah, and there was another one by a Berlin studio. If someone of the audience remember the name, which got bought by Calypso later on. Anyway, um, <laughs> That was not where you were working. You were no, working at the pen just and paper, the pen and paper stuff. Yeah. Demonicon, yeah, that's the name of the game, exactly. But the studio, silver something. Anyway, Johnny, what's your background? Uh, so uh, ever since uh, I went to university, I just started to start making games all the time. And that sort of just didn't really stop. And so, yeah, I was just... Uh, As soon as I got out of university, I was just making a lot of small indie games, uh, and I was fortunate enough to win like a, a competition. Wow! In, competition. In, uh, <laughs> wow. This is like, what, kind of, what kind of competition? <laughs> They gave money. <laughs> so there's this national competition in in, you know, in, in the UK for like uh, graduates of university, uh, like wow. a games competition, and yeah. you're given like the summer, like two three months to make a game and then pitch it uh, to like yeah to some famous people in the uk games industry and yeah we my my team and i were lucky enough to win that so wait we got... you never finished that game did you <laughs> <laughs> we, fi we, fin we finished it but we never released it for, uh, for complicated reasons i can't go into but it, it does exist but yeah yeah we mm. we won yeah we won this competition so we got given money to like continue our indie studio and then i was gonna get a, a real job i guess and then that didn't happen because <laughs> we won the competition which was great because i wanted to make uh, indie games or like make games as an indie so it just and then you took the money left the studio and found it together with annika or so so because because uh, as a studio uh we um uh it wasn't it wasn't a super large amount of money so we were kind of like We still had to like either live with our parents or and like we were like oh do we need to get like maybe part-time jobs to make it all work but then there, we found this co-living space in uh sweden and the rent there was fantastic so cheap it oh was, my god we were like yeah. wow this is this is it we can do it because if we move to sweden like we can we can afford everything and then when we were in sweden we met amazing people like annika yeah that's where we oh, met okay that's where, yeah. that's where i met annika mm. uh, but and we met and we met all these uh, other like we met this amazing uh Austrian game developer uh, called Stuffed Wombat. And so we were yeah. collaborating. So we collaborated with him and, and released the game, actually. Oh, but that was without me. So that, that was, was without Annika. Annika. Yeah, that was Johnny, uh, Finn and Josh. It was uh, oh, Pedro as well. Mm. So yeah, four friends. And they made this uh, small game called Or, this mobile it's like game. A, it's like a text-based adventure. But there's only ever three words on the screen at any time. So it's, it's really for cool. people who don't want to read, but still want to play text-based nice. adventures. And yeah, and then yeah. they won. They won an award in Austria. We won. Right? We won yeah. like an award in the Austrian <laughs> Austrian Game Awards. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So we have some. I think yeah, Austrian stuffed one, but has the award. <laughs> like, and then I, yeah, I showed Johnny the the prototype in uh, in yeah. Sweden, kind of to re to recruit him. You know, just slowly. Yeah. You know, get the connection up. And I did a bit of work back then too, didn't I? I made like a rhythm game. Yeah, that never went into the game. <laughs> And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I had to apply for medium board, and um, I re I realized that for medium board you need to have um, your company founded. Yeah. And so I went back to Berlin for a week, and within that week I looked for an apartment again because um, when I went to Sweden I gave up my apartment, so I came back again another apartment, and I founded the company, and it was so super complicated, and I actually did it on my own um, mm -hmm. at first. Uh, yeah, super stressful, um, but I yeah, got all of that done. And then later, uh, Johnny moved to uh, Berlin. Okay. And that's when um, yeah, Johnny was like, yeah, no, he's serious. He, you know, really wants to uh, work on this project. And then, yeah, he came on to the company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Con congratulations. I mean, talking about the coming back to the to the Sweden place, because I have this on my list as well, that I remember that you would, uh, you are talking about the Spell Collective uh, mm -hmm. place yeah. um, that is somewhere in a place that no one remembers as well, because it's quite rural outside as yes. far as I remember. Okay, but you went there twice then, once where you first met, and then again, where you were working on the title as a studio. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, maybe for those people in the chat that don't know this place yet, you can explain a little bit about uh, about it because it sounds too awesome to be true. I mean, it's <laughs> quite cheap, and uh, you get three meals a day and can work on your title all the time. Or 
Yes, yeah, so um, basically yeah, it's in the middle of the woods in Sweden. So I mean, the nature is beautiful. That's really nice. And you live together in a house with other game devs. So there were always around 30, 40 uh, people there. And yeah. uh, you have uh, your private room and uh, everything else is shared, you know? So you have shared uh, TV rooms, for example, board game rooms, whatever. And um, yeah. Yeah, a kitchen there. And like I said, yeah, you get uh, three meals a day. Um, just super, super nice included, you know, in the price. And yeah, you have, you know, fast internet and just everything you need really, which is, uh, yeah, really, really nice. Yeah, and it's okay. great to have all these people around you who are also interested in making games, yeah. who are like actively making their games. Uh, you get a really, yeah, you can kind of get really, uh, what's the word? Like, motivated. Motiv inspired yeah. by other people yeah. who are working on cool stuff. So I like that about the place for sure. And um, to, to, to give the audience an impression, how much do you pay uh, monthly, roughly? I mean, is I think, it like... I think now it's like 500 maybe, right? Yeah. Wow, which is just like... 500. 500 a month, yeah, well, for everything, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, it used to be like 400 or so when, when we went back then. Think, yeah. Yeah, which was way too cheap because also it's in, you know, <laughs> he needs to make his, yeah. his money back. So. It was quite yeah. new back then. So he was working yeah. out the pricing and mm. there was this balance of he needed, he needed the people to come and join to like create the, the mm -hmm. atmosphere that he needed. And so, yeah, it was a, a good timing thing as well for us. Yeah. <laughs> so so okay so the first time you met there the two of you met there and then Annika came up with the idea of stealing Johnny from his team and founding the own company <laughs> which you did that in one week uh here in Berlin um and how did you end up with the name of Happy Broccoli oh gosh so that was that one really stressful week in Berlin and I had one day to decide basically <laughs> it's like oh god what are we gonna name the company and then I thought of you know Broccoli Girl the character in the game I'm like that's great let's just be Broccoli Games but there already was a Broccoli Games. They made mobile games. I don't know. <laughs> like, okay, okay, what what else can we add to this? What's the, like, oh, just Happy Broccoli, maybe. And just Happy Broccoli also existed. I think they make, like, hand creams. I don't know. And, and so, like, okay, it's going to be Happy Broccoli Games, which is, you know, a bit long, but it's fine. And you can imagine the notary's look on his face when I come yeah. in there. I'm like, here, this is my Gesellschaftsvertrag. I don't know, like, the, the contract for the company, you know, yeah. and it says, Happy Broccoli Games, and he's looking at it like, okay, all right. <laughs> no one takes you seriously. It's quite funny. Happy Broccoli, then. Okay, <laughs> then you decide. And the, the team actually consists out, how, how many people are there within the team? It's the two of you, actually, yes? It's, um, so it's three people um, which are hired. So it's me, yeah. Johnny, and Irena. And then we have two freelancers also. That is uh, Damien Shepard. Who does the sound design? He's done stuff for uh, Yes Your Grace, for example, and other you know big big indie stuff. And we have Sviatoslav Petrov, who does the music, um, mm -hmm. who has done a lot of stuff for uh, other anime games, stuff like you know Dragon Dragon Ball games and this and that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I guess that would be a perfect where we're we coming closer to talk about Kraken Academy itself to give mm. the audience a quick outlook of how it looks like. So. Anna, could you be so kind and show the trailer for a second? Yes. It's my first day at a new school, and they're already threatening to abandon me in the woods? I bet my sister didn't have to go through any of this. students seem so friendly and are very enthusiastic to share their hobbies. Sometimes it feels like classes can get a bit sidetracked. Objection! Wait, now I have to help a Kraken save the world? Why is everything on fire? Uh, are those alligators eating children? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine, right? Right? Nice. 
Thanks a lot. And who spent close attention to the trailer could see little Broccoli Girl uh, hanging out yeah. there as well. Um, so Broccoli... Excuse me? No, no, never mind. Keep going, keep going. Okay. Bro broccoli, the, uh, broccoli Girl was there before um, you founded the studio. Was your yes. inspiration for, mm -hmm. for, for the name of the <laughs> yeah, studio? Yeah, the game, the game, the prototype and everything that was already there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, if you had to do the elevator pitch about what the game what the game is about and everything, how would it sound like? It would sound something like so it's <laughs> <laughs> it's your first day at a new school and a kraken recruits you to save the world and gives you a time travel amulet so you can go back the um the the last three days over and over again. And how did you come up with the idea of it? <laughs> so I really love Zelda Majora's Mask, especially um, the clock town there. So what I loved there was just observing people's routine throughout the day, you know, where they would be on a, on a Tuesday or Monday or whatever. On Tuesday it rains and then this one character is carrying uh, an umbrella. And I loved all those small things and kind of, you know, stalking people and seeing what their relationship is like with each other, you know, find out their secrets. I really, really loved that. And I was thinking, why isn't there a game that's just about that? And mm -hmm. um, so I had the idea of uh, making that, but I kind of lacked a setting. And so I remember that I made a comic with my sister way back, many, many years back. And um, I decided to um, take an inspiration from, from that, where it was basically two high schools that were fighting with each other. And one was very rich and one was very poor. And I mean, now it's completely different, you know, it's just one school and you have all these clubs, but you still, you know, kind of have this um, fight between the, between different classes, um, which mm -hmm. I thought was very interesting. Yeah. And then you said, okay, you had this idea of making, of making the game itself, but uh, did, did you have any background in, in founding a studio then? How, how did, no, you, you simply did it then? Or... Yeah, I, it was more like, okay, I have to do this because um you know i need to get funding my medium board it wasn't yeah. it wasn't the idea of oh i want to have a game studio so what do i need to do for that it came it came after mm -hmm. it's kind of organic in a way you know yeah you, just, you, you do just... what you gotta do no one wants to do the bureaucracy <laughs> yeah. but you have to do it you know yeah so in the the I mean the 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 style um, is very very uh, specific. You have this this like um, anime um, or at least for me it feels mm -hmm. like anime inspired uh, stuff. Are you a big fan of of like visual novels then uh, that brought you to come up with this kind of style? I don't like visual novels actually. Yeah, I don't really like yeah. them at all. I feel at least for me, I know there's a lot of people who love that, and that's perfectly fine but for me it kind of uh, lacks the the um interaction because i actually want to be in the space and i want to walk around the space so i think yeah. that's where it came from where i want to tell a story but i want you to physically be there and have this little character you can move around and i think that's that's where that came from so you did then the art as well as also the story writing or was this like mm -hmm. a collaborative effort no that's all that's all on yours yeah well mm -hmm. i mean of course not all of the ideas are mine i yeah. i wrote all of the the dialogues um but of course when you have you know a, a team that you work with it's it's important that you know you question your own ideas and also get some fresh ideas in because yeah. when you're too close to something i feel like it's just going to be a worse product and so of course i'm going to ask johnny and arena hey what do you think about this thing and that mm -hmm. or kind of lacking something here and Johnny, for example, he came up with uh, two of the characters. There's the cafeteria lot, um, <laughs> where, of course, you know, I had to be super into tea and, um, and this and that. Or um, the, there's one art student who is a dog that's very, very cute, like a little pug. And I remember when Johnny pitched that to me, I thought it was super stupid. I was like, really, Johnny's just going to be a dog? But then I thought about it, I'm like, well, maybe. I mean, we have talking broccoli in the game, so yeah. I guess that could fit. And it turned out really cute, and I really loved the character, and it makes it makes sense now. It doesn't feel uh, strange anymore. <laughs> it's just part of the world. So, and then you immediately, or not immediately, but uh, you went to the medium board and thought, okay, that's what we need to to um, get the funding, found the company and everything. And then, uh, luckily, you received everything. 
happy happy part of or, or getting the medium board funding then you started developing what was how what was the uh, time schedule in, in the beginning and uh, did, did you keep the time schedule so far or so we were surprisingly on time i have to <laughs> say um i'm I'm not, i'm not sure how 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 we managed that but somehow i guess from making the prototype we kind of knew how long things would take and also um, for the pro prototype, I already made a lot of the art. Mm -hmm. So I basically had all of the character portraits done already because there's a million characters, I think 40, over 40 portraits, you know, I, yeah. I, had, I had to draw for that game. And that was basically already there. Um, that was good. And then also um, the publisher, um, the publisher just decided that we would launch only on PC first and then yeah. later um, just on the consoles. And I guess that was also something that gave us more more time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I think even without that, we would have been on time. Um, and thankfully, that also didn't involve too much crunch. So in total, I would say we had to crunch around like two weeks. Yeah, there was um, two instances where, um, yeah, unfortunately, it was getting so tight. We're like, oh god, okay, we yeah. really really need to work on this longer now. Yeah. But it worked. It worked out really, really well. I think, yeah, yeah, I think we also got quite lucky with the uh, playtesting as well. With like, oh yeah, uh, our community was amazing. They they yeah. caught all of the bugs. Yeah. yeah, we had some people in our community who helped out playing the game, and they found so many of the issues in, yeah. in so quickly, and they were so they were so active, and they they enjoyed doing it all, uh, like helping us out, uh, and that allowed us to really quickly turn things around. Uh, yeah, and it was yeah. So like, that's very, very that's good to hear. How how long was the development process overall then, roughly? It was was it one and a half years. So yeah, uh, full time it was eighteen months, one and a half years. Yeah, because like Annika did so much work uh, before like me and Arena were part of the team. It was probably more like two years mm -hmm. if you factor in all of Annika's part time mm. work when she was you know setting up the studio and yeah. That stuff. So it was it was relatively quickly quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's definitely lessons learned with that. I think uh, being on the other side, it's uh, it's easier to see uh, the parts of the the, the the game where we were we clearly had uh, less enthusiasm or we were were more tired. <laughs> I think I don't well, know. Well, and we had less yeah. less time yeah, to less iterate time, yeah. because we translated into I think five languages. Mm -hmm. The problem was that the writing it had to be done a long time in advance. Yeah. And also, yeah, if if you plan to release on on console, you know, you have to submit uh, the builds very early and. In the beginning, you know, we were still planning to uh, release on uh, Switch at the same time. This yeah, was okay. a very pre pressing, a very pressing uh, issue. And so, for yeah. the last quest, for example, it's yeah, I it, it was basically the the second draft that just went out, and that was it. And of course, when I look at it now, ah, uh, yeah, there's some things I would like to change, but it, it yeah, it becomes too too complicated. And so, I think. I think for the for the future, we would then definitely plan in just an extra month there to make sure, okay, yeah. it's mm -hmm. perfect. Now it can go to translation. <laughs> yeah, also just delaying the translation too, right? Because I think uh yeah, we yeah, we could there's yeah, there's yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, the end of development is yeah, it's always so what there's so many small tasks that you leave along the way. Because yeah. you're like, because, well, because I'm lazy, I'm lazy. I'm like, ah, oh, it's it's not a problem now. That's future Johnny's problem. But then obviously there's a point where future Johnny <laughs> becomes, very... becomes yeah. present Johnny and that present Johnny hates past Johnny. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I hate these things where you're always like, oh, this is fine. Yeah, we're going to fix that later. It's not yeah. that important now. It never gets fixed. Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah, it's really it's really easy to tell yourself that. Uh, yeah, and. Oh, I mean, I mean, it's it's why you have to be very mindful to to do all the boring stuff at the beginning. So, yep. like, all, always, always, the first thing I do on a game project is make the settings menu. <laughs> yeah. Always, and Annika finds it very weird. I think, <laughs> yeah. But it's because it's because if you don't do the settings menu at the very beginning, it, it's something that you can always just push and push and push because yeah, okay. As a, as the developers, we don't need the settings menu. Like, we're just going to be yeah. going to be testing it. But yeah, so. 
So yeah, it's getting the 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 stuff out of the way that it's like eating your vegetables before having your dessert. <laughs> So actually, it's a game about time traveling and also a story of the making the game while time traveling somehow with past <laughs> and future, <Yeah>. future journey. <laughs> um, so when you, you, you mentioned before that you already had the prototype in the beginning, is that included within the 18 months um, of the development process itself? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. right? But the eight, but 18 months was yeah. after, right? No, no, because we started in March and we had the prototype done in... In a June. But that's not the one hmm. I made, right? That's what we made together. Oh yeah. Oh which yeah. The one. <laughs> yeah, the one that I made um, was not within the eighteen months. Okay. So, yeah. In total, uh, it was longer. Yeah, hmm. lots of different different stages mm. of of pre production to get. So. But um, still, I mean, uh, as a studio, as a newly found studio, um, it's an achievement already. Just keeping to the time schedule for your first title that you're doing together, so um, that it worked out pretty well. And mm -hmm. um, you talked about the publisher already, which is Fellow Traveler, which mm -hmm. you got in common with uh, Torpor Games that we had the last time oh, here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, also, yeah. Uh, also like the work of Irene somehow. But um, how did you end up with, uh, with um, meeting Fellow Traveler? When got they interested in Kraken Academy? So um, they have one person on the team who lives in Germany. Uh, he's called Des. And he visited Berlin and he visited um, Saftladen where he talked to some yeah. of uh, the devs. And then one of our friends there, Luca, he mentioned um, our game to them. You know, he was like, oh yeah, I know uh, this team is making this uh, story game. You're probably going to be interested. And mm -hmm. uh, he told us about that. And uh, that's when we checked them out and we thought, great, you know, it's a, it's a publisher who's focused on exactly what we're making. They have yeah. that target audience. Um, and so we decided to talk to them and they made a very good uh, impression, really, really kind, um, really good people. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so there was actually, you, you didn't really start pitching yet or anything, but uh, they, they found you somehow. And then you saw like, okay, it's a good idea. It looks like a perfect fit and then I, I pitched. I pitched before. I started pitching before. Ah, okay. So they somehow came over on the on the perfect time. You know, it was perfect yeah. timing then when I was yeah pitching to more people. Mm. Um, but yeah, the people we pitched to before they weren't quite uh, as good of a fit. So either the contract was absolutely terrible, um, or you know they just they made a, a weird impression where they felt more like they were. Uh, business people and didn't really know that much about the, the games itself and about yeah. what actually makes people interested in them and I'm a bit worried when when someone you know look, looks at at something from so far removed there's a lot of uh, publishers who came from uh, AAA and they yeah. think that you can just do the same marketing uh, for for indie games and they don't understand, um, yeah, well, what is actually about. And they throw around these these names of these very famous people, which I don't care about if they're you know involved in your company. That's not what I'm what I'm looking for. Um, and and so yeah, fellow traveler felt more um, personable and more yeah. more involved, more passionate about what they do. And they are <laughs> as well. Yeah. <laughs> they are really passionate about like, specific narrative games. They so. are. Yeah. That's good to hear after releasing on three platforms that you still like each other and it's not like, no, they are the worst ever and that was the bad, worst decision we ever had in our life. So happy, ha happy to hear that, that it works out for with, with fellow traveler. And while you were uh, saying that um, you didn't feel quite happy with the other um, publishers doing more this like triple A approach, uh, usually I'm always uh, I'm asking people, uh, most of the time, whether it's what what brings them into the industry, is it more like the art approach or is it more like the money approach? Where would you locate yourself on this spectrum of money and um, and art somehow? Yeah, I think if we wanted money, we wouldn't be making indie games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's not. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a very very risky business. Um, and so it's, yeah, art 100%. It's all about being passionate and making something that people love. Because the best thing is really reading these comments of people being like, oh my God, I super love the game. This was amazing. Or back, you know, pre-COVID going to these uh, conventions and then seeing people, you know, with their uh, glistening yeah. eyes all excited about the banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and also just the craft of it as well like the yeah it's fun just, just making yeah, it I think yeah. yeah being creative or or making something that like from an experience perspective feels nice to use is also like yeah very uh yeah very nice to do right the, the process of building itself then mm. yeah, I could, very, I, yeah I could imagine within this crunch times you felt different about it but uh, <laughs> if it was only like two weeks a very short period I think that that's fine yeah. um yeah we you recover. Meant, you, <laughs> that's good to hear <laughs> um you you mentioned uh, that you cut in that you have an awesome community I mean how early um did you um give the game or, or make it accessible for your community somehow to give feedback on the gameplay itself um is we there a have, rough yeah when did we have the first demo up in oh my god uh was it like half a year before we released or something yeah it was quite early i think yeah. it was more i think more? it was like nine months i think it was january for the steam next festival yeah we had it in there so i think that was the first time mm -hmm. that it was available like uh digitally for people to download yeah. the demo it would have been yeah eight or nine months eight yeah eight months before release Uh, and at that point, I mean, the demo for us was just the last 20 minutes of the game. So it wasn't, it didn't cost anything extra really to make it mm. beyond uh, like rigorous tape play testing to make sure that it didn't make people's computers explode. Uh, and uh, I think on the community building thing, it's something for me I found, found uh, really strange because uh, I didn't take much part in it. I mean, it was uh, obviously Rena did a lot of the hard work and Annika as well in building that community. But it's amazing how uh, it's it's sort of a compounding process where, yeah. you know, think things like they like sort of double in size. So at the beginning, it, it feels like, you know, you may be only getting like a few likes on Twitter or a few people, like a handful of people in your Discord and they're all your friends or whatever, <laughs> or whatever it is. Yeah. You, know, you, just, you just message your friends being like, join my Discord channel. And, and that's yeah. how it starts. But then six months down the line there's there's people there you don't know and that's yeah. they're like strangers and they're just <laughs> they ride game. on your discord and then, <laughs> and, then, and, then it, and then it happens six months later it's people saying like oh yeah my like my friend told me to join this discord or whatever it is mm. so it's uh it takes time i think that's actually maybe the biggest thing with co with community is, it's a grind it's, it's yeah. a grind it takes time so the best time to start is now because the sooner you start the sooner you begin the process of just putting yourself and your game out there is what i'd say uh and it's yeah it doesn't yeah it's... And that's that's interesting because i mean some some uh, years ago you know when people were developing new games uh, it was difficult for them or they rarely wanted to share their game because i mean you could steal my idea or whatever and <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so awesome yeah. I, mean, i can't show it to you sign this nda and everything and then maybe you can take a look at it uh while nowadays you see this more and more often that like marketing people are very early on within the team and like uh a crucial part of developing this game and making sure that the message is brought on to the audience early on. I mean, how uh, uh, when uh, did Irene join uh, the team actually and and uh, uh, contribute to the to the making of? So she joined later on. I think it was about half a year after we it started. It was only it was only no, a few months after months. I joined actually. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, in the beginning, I had to also do, you know, social media and the whole yeah. community thing and, you know, cut, cut our, you know, very first trailer and mm -hmm. all these things. It was a lot, a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Um, yeah. So I was very, <laughs> very happy when Rena joined. And um, yeah, she does, she does an amazing job. She really knows what she was, what she's doing. And we know we can trust her 100%. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like we have to look like, oh, what's Irina doing? What's Irina doing? No, it's like she just she just does it, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, and it all works out. It's really nice. It takes a lot of, yeah, extra extra stress from us, so we don't have to worry about everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and if people within the audience want to join your community uh, right now, uh, where should they go? Where do they find your Discord? So they can go to uh, kraken-academy.com. And there we have a link for our Discord, <laughs> and then they can yeah they can hang out with our uh, awesome community. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think yeah we 
We've got some and, cool things planned for the coming months. Sorry. Oh, we do. Oh, but we yeah. can't talk about it yet. No, <laughs> but soon, <laughs> soon. If you're on the Discord, you. there's some cool things yeah. happening. There will be there will be something to win soon. Yeah, <laughs> something very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, Irene was so kind to, to share the links. So make sure oh, to thanks. join the Discord. See, that's and what be... I mean. It's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have to take care of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and and how did you like um, include uh, your community regarding the bug testing process? I mean you just put it out or did you or, uh, you just put just i mean you put out the the demo version or the version they could play it and then did you set up a bug tracker where they could contribute to or did you collect just the messages from twitter what they were coming back so, with yeah, or they, they came to us so mm -hmm. so we put the game out but then they would come yeah. back to us with their reports uh they'd be like yeah this this and this and then or or uh, you know they they'd even, like some would even send videos which is super yeah. helpful. So involved. Uh, yeah. and, and then from that, we, we, we messaged them and we were like, wow, this is really helpful. Would you like to like try out uh, more of the game? And then we could, we could give, them access, give them access to more stuff. And then, uh, yeah, it, just, it, was, it was quite organic, right? The people mm -hmm. that were really passionate about, about it came to us. So um, I'm trying to think if we, mm -hmm. if we I, think, I think after that, then we, we did, uh, bring some more people in right after we build yeah we select after that uh we selected uh some people in the in the discord yeah. um uh i think we did a did a raffle yeah. something like that who could do a beta testing and then we added those people but yeah the first people that came organically those were just the, the ones the most um that would that would contribute the most the most vigorous yeah. we had um a, a studio hired also a qa studio and i have to say that was an absolute disaster they mm. found nothing. They found no bugs. They found <laughs> two bugs. Uh, one we already knew about. We told them even. And the other one was a spelling mistake. <laughs> I was so angry. I was like, really? And you charge so much money for this. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was awful. And so ever since then, we we know we can only really trust our, our community to do the job correctly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you... Um... You, uh, as far if if I got it right, you started with um, uh, development in pre-COVID times. I mean, it's crazy yeah. that we're talking about those <laughs> your good old days, pre-COVID <laughs> times, where it was still possible to to uh, go to conventions and and trade shows. Um, how was your take on that? I mean, if you if both of you or the three of you actually go to a convention, no one can work on the game. Is it like um, how how did you like decide on how important is it to go out and show the game while working on the game? Um, I I think at the time, I mean, I know it sounds a bit cynical, but it's it feels more like vacation <laughs> rather than you know really work um because you know you you get to go to a different country and it's all very exciting yeah. and obviously it drains your energy and it does take away from development time but also it provides morale mm -hmm. um which is very very important because you can't be in your basement and make this game in isolation you're going to become so sad and when you're sad you're less productive so you know <laughs> <laughs> need, to, need, to, need to stay happy um and also one one of the people actually that we met in um poznan um yeah. was um one of our super fans who then stayed on our discord and she was the one who found the most bugs who would vigorously play through everything she found all the collision issues mm -hmm. and she was really really into it and if we didn't go you know we wouldn't have had someone who tests all of that and we probably would have had a lot more complaints so in the end it always works out i think but is she was just a regular visitor or is yeah. she professionally working in the industry somehow and no. also liking him? No, she's just a super fan then. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she should. She's really good. <laughs> she, should, yeah. she should be a QA tester. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Yeah. Like if she's a freelancer and just does that, like, please yeah, come to us. <laughs> yeah. While checking on your homepage, I also uh, discovered that Coffee Stain is also involved in the studio somehow. How, how did this end up, your relationship with Coffee Stain? So they are an investor and um, they have this program called Leveling the Playing Field, where uh, they want to invest in diverse companies. And mm -hmm. it was actually uh, Irena who introduced us. And that was before Irena uh, started working for us. So yeah, it's thanks to Irena that we were able to make this game at all. 
Yeah. Um, and then it was very fitting that yeah, she would later join the company. And when I first had the meeting with them, I remember I had it uh, with Sebastian and um, I arrived there there early and just had a one on one meeting with him it was great. So I could, you know, give the presentation, you know, the whole spiel. And he didn't seem uh, very excited. He, I don't know, he just kept his <laughs> poker face up, you know, I'm like, oh no, he hates it. Oh no. And, yeah. And I don't know, I didn't, I didn't feel like it was going well at all. And then a couple of days later, I received an email. It was like, oh my God, I love the game. Everyone on <laughs> super loves the game. You know, we want to invest it. And you're like, what? <laughs> really? It was very surprising. Yeah. Uh, happy to hear that that this uh, worked out so well and that was already before you got like the medium board funding then um or so uh, i already got the okay from medium boards but of course you can't receive the money uh before uh, you have the other half as well from somewhere else and yeah. so yeah i still had to pitch to publishers try to get it from somewhere and um yeah i'm very happy then coffee stain ended up being that partner Mm -hmm. I see Irene is just is just <laughs> adding up here that it was during the time uh, while she was working at Gamesnet Berlin Brandenburg and one of the mm -hmm. events that she organized was to connect indie studios with investors and publishers so go, good man. thing to be part of it to cover the <laughs> advertisement part here as well of Gamesnet uh, Berlin Europe as it's called now um, you mentioned um, diversity already, Annika, that um, it's like one of the initiatives of Coffee Stain was or is to uh, level the playing field, bring more diverse people into the into the community of developing games. Um, how is your take on this as someone who uh, late, lately somehow entered the industry? Would you say from your perspective that you're already feeling like there is something that the industry has achieved of being a more diverse place? Or do you still feel like an, I don't know, outsider at something like the, the business part of Games Convention, uh, Gamescom, for example? I would say it's getting there. We're, we're on a good way. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think... I think, um, yeah, the one thing that's really, really amazing in Berlin is that everyone is so kind and welcoming that, you know, I never felt uh, like an outsider or, or anything, especially, you know, at events like talk and play, I could really feel how even, even though someone mm -hmm. has been in industry for 10 years, they would never look down on me, never. They would be very, very respectful. And that was amazing. And I think um, yeah, it has to start with um, also, um, yeah, people, you know, e even if most people who are at a certain um, event, you know, yeah. are men, let's say, you know, it starts with, yeah, them just being, you know, respectful and not seeing you as, you know, something unusual, um, which can be, you know, quite just annoying and making you, yeah, feel like you don't belong. Um, so that's really great. Um, and of course, you know, outside of Berlin, you know, that there has been some moments that that have been quite uncomfortable, where mm -hmm. I can still say, okay, we're not, we're not quite there yet, but we're we're on a good way, and I'm very hopeful and positive. Yeah. Yeah. Hope, hopefully, uh, this path continues that we're not don't have to talk about uh, uh, things like diversity in the in the future. Uh, that intense anymore um mm -hmm. i didn't actually ask i mean uh johnny uh, uh, annika already mentioned you are not from berlin um you were oh, born yeah. and raised <laughs> in uk um where in uk again uh i come from london yeah london okay yeah. and annika what about yourself you, you are you born and raised here in berlin or yes what did you? i am okay. yeah. You you are rushing, right. okay. That answers then the question: Why? What makes you found the the studio here? And uh, Johnny, you moved over then some years ago, yeah, some month I, ago, some weeks ago, or if I'm being if I'm being like honest with myself as well as the audience, yeah, I think uh, Brexit may have played a role in my decision <laughs> to move to Europe. Uh, Didn't want to mention <laughs> that, but if you're saying that, okay, yeah, I think I was yeah a bit disappointed. Uh, with, the, with the outcome of that and yep. uh, I love Europe a big big Europe patriot is, is that <laughs> what you call it I don't know so yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I didn't want to um, leave. <laughs> 
So I don't have to to ask Annika then whether she's doing fine in Berlin because you're actually enjoying it, I think. Um, but Joy, how, what about yourself then? Um, it was um, you are happy with the decision to move here then and and um, uh, enjoying the the German or the Berlin games industry so far? Yeah, I love I love I mean, Berlin. I love yeah, it's it's a fantastic city. Uh, it's yeah. It's ah, oh, it's so nice. It's yeah, I really, really like it here. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's um, I guess I don't know when you when you move somewhere new, when you like when you uh, emigrate is that the word? Yeah, when you emigrate to a new country, I I feel like you don't have many expectations of uh, whether you're going to stay there permanently or whether you're whether you're just going to leave. But I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm I'm very happy yeah. here. I guess so. So yeah, it's really really nice. Yeah, and the, the community is amazing too, and uh, it's 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 like very multicultural as well as as well as like yeah, uh, being diverse. I'm very happy to hear that, uh, especially as there's not so much community related things going on the last uh, two years uh, because of the COVID uh, pandemic. But I mean, somehow the good days will come back hopefully for all of us. Um, let's not discuss about Freedom Day because I'm not up to date how it works with the mask now and everything in uh, Berlin, but I'm pretty sure that sooner or later also Games at Berlin Europe will host some more physical events. <laughs> um, and we can talk to each other um, in person. Um, while uh, we are uh, only having a few minutes left, that's why I would love to encourage the audience if there are some specific questions that you would like to ask Annika or to Joni or want to know about Happy Broccoli, now it's your time to write it down and we will check it out and uh, ask Annika and Joni later about it. Um, meanwhile, um, some more questions from my side, surprisingly. Um, when you were um, when you were developing the game, was there some certain game design pillars or ethics where you would say, okay, this is the most important part of the game when we develop this that needs to be in there all the time? The number one rule. I I really like besides the setting menu. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I have I have all these like weird rules about like yeah, game development and game design. Like I think uh, yeah, shortly after I joined the team, like. Uh, 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 Annika, like you, you wrote down the pillars, right? Of like, like, like the pillars mm. for the games. So we have like mm. three, three core pillars of like these are the things we need to hit. So if you know, if you ever like feeling like you don't know which direction to go, it's easy. Yes. There's like the list of things to keep you on track. I'm trying to remember what they were. Oh God, well, one, <laughs> uh, well, one was to not make the time loop tedious, right? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. other thing to make sure you connect with the characters. Mm. Yeah, because this is, it's all about, um, yeah, the different personalities of the characters. And so we want you by the end of playing the game to have one favorite character, you know, just one you really like and one you really hate. <laughs> uh, we didn't want someone to just have neutral feelings towards all of them. Because, yeah. yeah, Kraken Academy, like I've, I like my um, roller coaster ride analogies. So, <laughs> Kraken Academy was also supposed to be like a roller coaster, you know? It's not supposed to be this gentle ride. I thought, like, I thought no. you pick another ride, like a break dance. You know, like <laughs> no, it's also. Dance. A <laughs> I don't know. What's the big, what's the big swing called? Oh, Maybe like the ship? That? Yeah, like, the, like it's sometimes a pirate ship. Oh, it makes ship. you yeah. nauseous. That it shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be that. Yeah. Okay, okay. But, but also, you know, because it's a school setting, one thing that was very important to us. We didn't uh, want to have bullying in the game because yeah. I feel, uh, I don't know, many times, um, especially, I don't know, when you might watch um, like anime set at school or yeah, just movies or, or um, whatever TV show set in school, you have this, you know, one kid that gets bullied by everyone. And I think, you know, why, why, why do we need to have that in the game? I know that happens and it's awful, but I just, we don't need it, <laughs> okay? Yeah. We don't want to want to get anyone's you know childhood uh, or like school trauma back while they play instead it should just be this uh magical place where people just get on i mean sure there's some people who don't like each other that happens but it's not like anyone gangs up on someone that was something we 100 percent wanted to avoid mm -hmm. and it looks like you did a good job because we have this one question the audience uh, where it looks like some 
character resonated with uh, the player and uh, where it's like the, the question is how did the collaboration with UP Psycho came to be? Ah, yeah. And who is UP Psycho? <laughs> Maybe if I exclude myself here from any pop cultural references. So um, it's this pixel art game. Um, it's like a horror comedy. Office horror. Office horror comedy. <laughs> Office and, horror comedy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, and, and we're this, um, you know, school comedy with dark humor. Um, and we're, we're fans of this game. We really, really love it. And we thought that the um, audience might overlap really nicely. Also, mm -hmm. um, because they have um, kind of this anime style in their uh in, in their portrait art and in their in their key art and that's why we decided to approach them and just be like hey do you want to you know have a bundle together and they were they were up for it so that was yeah. that was exciting in the end though the, the our, our publisher and their publisher had to like mm. i guess do all the it's like our the, parents yeah, it's yeah, like our parents have to talk to one yeah. another yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the initial with the initial uh, i think i think we reached out to a few other studios as well just games that we liked yeah like thought, exactly yeah, where we yeah. thought the audience My, all overlapped yeah. yeah oh sorry go ahead <laughs> no per perfect I'm, i'm happy to hear that that it works out when parents talk to each other and still some fruitful results can come out of that um you mentioned that there is this uh, an analogy of um the roller coaster ride and uh, the break dancer of the development <laughs> process of Kraken Academy itself. May this, may this lead to maybe a future title where it's Kraken Amusement Park or something coming up? What's, what's the next thing you're going to do <laughs> after fixing all the bugs for the, for the console ports so far? Yeah, the next thing we want to set in the same universe. Um, But yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to want to mention too much already in case you yeah. know things change. You know how development goes. <laughs> we're we're um, actively working on that though. Yeah, is, but there uh, might there might be an amusement park. I hope it makes it in. Well, there I might don't not. Know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> now we have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, sadly, you don't want to give us any future insights. But but it's uh, great to hear already that um, that you have more this like IP approach and there will be future editions of uh, Kraken Academy somehow um, showing us uh, what's going on in, in the world of uh, in the Kraken world. Um, so um, let's briefly uh, talk some numbers. I mean, are you satisfied with with the release number with the with the sales numbers so far? Is that working out well? Are there any numbers you can roughly tell to us without talking to your parents? So yeah, it went really well. So we at least broke even. So yeah, yeah we're, we're in plus now, which is great. Um, su super great, you know, especially for our first game. Um, so we're, we're very relieved. And yeah. <laughs> this, this, again, will be something very nice to tell, um, you know, the next uh, publisher or investor or whoever, yeah. you know, we're going to work with. It's going to calm down a lot. Um, and yeah, it allows us, you know, to continue mm -hmm. to, be, to be safe. So yeah, it's all very good. Great. This this looks like a very positive outlook for the for the future yeah. so far. <laughs> and as we also uh, run out of time, and I was told not to overextend this time. No, I'm making this up. I could overextend. <laughs> I'm not doing this time. I will be perfectly on time this time. Um, so yeah. First of all, uh, thanks a lot for being with us today, taking the time and explaining to the audience about the development process of Kraken Academy and uh, the history of Happy Broccoli uh, games. Also, big thanks to uh, Gamesnet Berlin Europe for giving us the possibility to talk here. And uh, yeah, also big thanks to the audience who took the time to listen to us. And there are two more things that I just wanted to add up that I read in the chat. First one, uh, Tom, thanks for, men uh, for uh, mentioning this. It was Silver Style Games who did the um, Dark Eye game here in Berlin, or one of the Dark Eye oh, games, okay. Demonicon. And the other one I would love to mention is that what Ruth posted, that we also have this kind of spell collectivity here in Germany right now, in Klein Glean, it's called the Rabbit at Coconut. It's We're similar going to there. <laughs> are you going there? So yeah. that's the <laughs> When when are you going there? When uh, is it happening well, again? In a week. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Roller coaster. No, never <laughs> Roller coaster, right? No, great. So uh, everyone, make sure to to visit then uh, the rabbit at coconut. I mean, it's yeah. not not 
possible to visit that but online i think that at least you can check it out and in the future everyone can work there as well so it's good to see that this is happening here funded by the yeah. medium board and um yeah and i think that sums it up for today thanks so thanks everyone for being with us and uh, enjoy playing uh, kraken academy all day and night make sure to join the discord and buy every version of it yes, uh, okay. at least two times on each platform <laughs> thanks so much for having yeah, us thanks, thanks so much us. everyone yeah. Take care. so thanks a lot oh, bye bye everyone <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>